Hey folks, it's Julie. Today's topic is going to be 10 publishing myths. These are 10 misconceptions that I've been seeing floating around blogs and conversations, um, in passing talks I've had with other people who are in or want to be in the publishing industry, and I thought I'd just collect 10 of them and address why they're not true and uh, give you some information about why not. Um, and um, they're not any particular subject associated with publishing. They're not really any cohesive topic, but they're just kind of random. So um, I'm going to jump right in and address the first myth. Myth number one, you have to know someone on the inside to get published. It's absolutely not true. Um, I know that there's this perception, I think especially from either new writers or people who just haven't managed to make a lot of friends in the industry, where they feel like the writing community is, is super clicky or that uh, publishing industry people just don't talk to anybody unless they're getting introduced by somebody that they already know. I'm not going to say that there aren't clicks because obviously there are. I'm not going to say that... Um, the whole world of publishing is uh, you know, exempt from this. Of course it's not, but um, it's equally untrue that you have to be part of that or that you have to break into a click somehow before you can get your book published. Um, the most common way to get your book published in a traditional manner is to query agents and sign with an agent and um, then the agent sells your book. Um, ultimately that is about far more um, associated with the book that you're giving them, with the manuscript, than it is with who you know. Uh, granted, of course, if you know someone who is, a, is an author, or if you know someone in the publishing industry and they're willing to put your work in front of somebody, um, you know, that might be an opportunity that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten. Certainly that is possible. Those kinds of things do occur. But it is absolutely not true that that's the only way to go about it. And if you're actually sitting here watching this video and you think that everybody who has managed to sell a book, it's just because they knew someone, it wasn't because they really deserved it, you're really going about it the wrong way because you're going to be focusing far more on your networking than you are on your product. And that's really where your heart needs to be. Why do you even want to sell a book if you think it's more about who you know? So, um, you know, you really got to center yourself and look at what you're trying to get into the publishing industry, what group you're trying to join through that feat, and uh, worry less about who you know. Um, of course, it can be wonderful to make friends along the way, but don't do it because you feel like you have to make friends with the right person before the right person is going to see your book. Myth number two. Publishing is run by women, so if you're a man, you're not going to have as good of a chance to get published. Okay, so it is true, actually, that many, many publishing agencies, many publishers, editors, there are a lot of women in publishing. Yes, there are a lot of women authors. Uh, interestingly enough, male authors are still wildly successful and tend to overall get paid more. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about where those stats come from or um, you know what they mean because I don't really want to make this video about that. But um, if you're a man and you're starting to notice that uh, you know groups of mentors, groups of editors, they're so often women, and you feel like you know our publisher's going to look down on me because I'm a dude. Do I need to change my name to something androgynous or initials or something? Is it going to work against me to be a man? Absolutely not. No, it is not going to work against you to be a man. Um, it is interesting that women used to have to go through that back in the day when it actually was illegal in some cases and in other places just they wouldn't trust you if you were a woman. Um, that they had to do that, but at least in the current climate, there is no move toward uh, making it so that men have a harder time getting published. Um, of course, there is a common understanding that certain genders write certain types of books uh, more often and better. And, you know, it's up to you if you want to use 
a, uh, an androgynous name or something that'll make you uh, feel more like you're not getting judged on your gender, that's up to you. But you should never feel like if you're a guy, you don't have a chance. Myth number three. If your book isn't perfectly edited, that's probably why people keep saying no. That's not true. Um, I have a whole separate video about how important editing is. I will be one of the first to say, yes, you should clean your book up as best you can, and if you're not very good at that, you should hire an editor. It is very important because it's about professionalism. Um, and, you know, if you turn in an unedited book, people will feel like you think that part of it's not your job, and it is. Uh, but a few mistakes are not what is going to keep you out of the arena. So, you know, if you keep getting rejected and your thought is, I just need to get a better proofreader, that's the wrong path. Um, you know, you, you probably need to get a better developmental editor, maybe some critique partners, you know, keep writing more stuff and listen to criticism. Um, or it could just be about persistence, or it could be just about uh, who you're pitching. You know, just be careful about uh, hanging your beliefs on one cause and fixating on what it must be. Because chances are, it's going to be subjective. People are going to reject you for all kinds of reasons. So um, editing probably isn't it unless that's specifically what the people rejecting you are saying. Myth number five, traditional publishing is dying. Um, some people are saying this because paper books are getting less popular. Some people are saying this because bookstores are having more trouble staying afloat. Some people are saying this because of the rise of digital publishing and the ease with which individuals can self-publish books. None of this means that traditional publishing is dying. Um, it is very much alive. It is just having to change in a lot of ways to keep up with the way people read now, with the way people produce books, with the way that people buy books. And, you know, they are making those changes if they're not going out of business. Uh, there are a lot of huge publishing conglomerates that are still very much still acquiring titles. So, you know, no traditional publishing is not circling the drain. Myth number six, if you have an agent, they're in charge of what you write. That's completely not true. Uh, they may make recommendations about which of your titles might fit in today's market more effectively. Um, they may give you suggestions and whatnot, but if you're watching television and you know somebody's agent is really pushy and they keep telling them what to do and it's like they're their boss or something, um, you've misunderstood how the agent-client relationship works. It is a very weird one because they get to pick who they work for, but once they work for you, they work for you. They don't get to tell you what to do. And um, it is sometimes, uh, you know, it can be a little intimidating if you have an agent who is very knowledgeable and they're telling you, oh, this won't work and this will. They're giving you very strong advice about full revisions that you have to do, but it's still up to you what you decide to do. You can choose whether you want to take that advice. It, it isn't like once you sign a contract, your intellectual property becomes theirs or that they get to dictate the next thing that you write in your writing career or to choose what path you have to take. So if that's your conception of what agents do, uh, you haven't really done your homework. Myth number seven, your book won't sell because publishers have blackballed your genre. Okay, I will be the first to say that sometimes when, especially when publishing trends have kind of run their course or, you know, when another shiny, bright new genre is popping up and stealing all the new big deals, um, it can start to feel a little hopeless if you have written a vampire book and the twilight buzz is gone or something like that. 
Um, what I'm going to say is that um, certain titles from supposedly blackballed genres are going to get through anyway. They're popular at one time because there was something really compelling about them, and eventually at some point that will be interesting and or nostalgic again. Nothing gets blackballed forever. And if you're despairing because you happen to have always wanted to write such and such and now something else has taken all the thunder and now everybody thinks that anybody who writes in your genre is just copying that and they don't want any more of it, you shouldn't despair too much because even when that's disappointing and it's, it's very difficult for say some of us who have been trying to sell urban fantasy or something like that and the market is saturated you're gonna hear comments like that but if you're a writer and you love writing you can write something else you can always write something else and uh, you know see if you can try your hand at something that isn't blackballed at the moment and blackballed isn't really the word that we would use anyway um, you know, you'll probably hear phrases like the market is saturated or uh, I've just bought too many titles of that, um, that kind of genre, or that would be a direct competitor for one of my other clients. You'll hear stuff like that for popular things and it can make it seem like you're up against um, impossible odds. But you're a writer. Write more stuff. Write something that isn't that. You'll love that too. And uh, eventually, someday, hopefully there will be an opening for one of your earlier loves. Myth number eight. You need small publications before you can sell a book. Um, well, there are many, many, many living examples of why that's not true. Um, I've sold some short stories, but I got a book deal before I sold any short stories. Um, they really don't help you that much. Um, they just kind of make you look like you have something to put in your bio. Um, it's almost irrelevant. Um, it has nothing to do with whether they'll be convinced to look at your uh, at your manuscript. It has nothing to do with whether they'll be convinced to purchase your book at a publisher. Uh, it really has nothing to do with anything. Um, and uh, honestly, I think short fiction is more relevant if you're trying to sell more short fiction. So no, you don't need writing credits before you'll be able to get an agent or sell a book. Myth number nine, if you're a traditionally published author, you can get book deals for your friends. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, so, like I said earlier, yes, it's true that if you know someone, you know, they're your buddy, and they're willing or able to get your stuff in front of an agent, that's about as far as they can go, get it in front of an agent or an editor. You know, their recommendation might go far in opening the door, but it's still going to have to be your product that does what it's supposed to do. It, it's still going to deserve it if you did know someone on the inside uh, who managed to get, you know, the right pair of eyes on it at the right time. You know, it's still the product that matters the most. Um, you know, that, that really is the truth in 99.9% .9 of deals. And, um, you know, um, if you know some published authors, leave off, like, bugging us to get you in with our agents or something. It's just, it's not gonna work. We don't have that kind of pull, generally. And if we're super famous, you probably don't know us. Um, <laughs> I guess I can't speak for them. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's it's not possible and it's looked down upon. Uh, you know, if we try to, you know, pull strings for you. But I will say that, you know, if you have somebody who is a writer friend, who is willing to give you a referral, that's different. But they can't just be somebody you barely know or somebody that you have had very few conversations with if you happen to know them on Twitter or something. Somebody that you're friendly with, yes, they can give you a referral. But, you know, there's a big difference between a referral and, like, um, getting someone a book deal. Um, yeah, it's just not within our power. Um, you know, and if... Uh, you know, I know I know quite a few um, other writers through some of the programs I've participated in that have you know been much more successful than I have, and you know I've never even thought once about uh, hitting them up to get their their editor to take a look at my stuff. You know, it's just it's just not uh, appropriate, and it doesn't work. And myth number ten: your book needs a registered copyright 
before you start sending it out for evaluation to protect it from publishing industry professionals possibly stealing your idea. Uh, this is a pretty big ludicrous one. Um, don't put the copyright symbol or the word copyright on your manuscript when you're sending it out. Um, that's kind of an amateur mistake. It's one of those things that makes people understand that you don't understand what copyright is. You automatically own the copyright for anything that you put down into a fixed form. You don't own the idea, you own the words, you own the form. And uh, if somebody is really lazy uh, and wants to just steal ideas because they can't think of their own, uh, they're in the wrong industry. They're, you know, they're the hard part is the execution and trying to sell a book. Like that whole part of it is very, very difficult and it's not for lazy people. And so somebody who is just out there skulking around trying to steal ideas, um, yeah, the ideas are the easy part. So um, basically if you announce that your book is copyrighted to an agent or a publisher that you're trying to sell your work to or you're trying to get them to evaluate your work for possible representation, um, they're going to think, well, this is an amateur, or, you know, I'm going to have to explain to them that they shouldn't put copyright on their, on their title page. It's, it's just not necessary, and it suggests that you think that they're not out to partner with you or help you. They're out to steal from you, and that does not protect you so much as it just makes you look like uh, you have the wrong idea about how everything Kind of works and you know that's why I make videos like this to try to help people who just have heard the wrong thing from somebody and or they've been you know misled by television or they've been misled by something they read in a book once um, you know I, I want people who love writing to have the best chance to get their stuff out there so don't believe myths like these and um, I, uh, I wish you the best in whatever kind of dreams you're trying to chase if you've heard any uh, myths that you want to find out, uh, you know, what I think of them or uh, any controversial statements that you want to leave in the comments for me to address, go ahead and do that. Um, or if you have further questions about any of the things that I said in this video, let me know. Um, I'm open to questions. So uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.